comments that I've gotten from you guys about how I inspired you or the videos inspired you to buy your own BRZ that is awesome so I emailed Subaru hopefully I hear back from them and you know we can work together in the future that'd be awesome but uh, so thank you very much I'm gonna throw up a little collage of just some of the BRZ pictures that uh, you guys sent in that you said were purchased with you know the help of my videos uh, giving you some ideas about what the car is like so uh, there's that little collage So what's new with the BRZ? Well, it's actually warm outside again today. It's mid 50s here in Pittsburgh. And uh, so that means that this car is finally gonna get its first hand washed. I'm gonna just, you know, go through and see how the paint looks after the winter. And uh, uh, speaking of winter, I'm gonna leave the winter tires on for a little while longer because it's still gonna get below freezing here some nights, I think for the next week or so. Um, but I'm still trying to figure out what I wanna do. I'm considering putting the old Michelins back on because they weren't quite finished yet. I'm thinking about putting those back on and uh, finishing those off, you know, taking a month or two to finish those off and then buy the new tires still not sure what I'm gonna do with that but uh, that's something I'm considering so one new thing that I did actually get for the BRZ uh, was the shark fin antenna that uh, beat Sonic makes I just got one of those many thanks to Ronaldo for uh, contacting Eric at beat Sonic thank you Eric for hooking me up and Ronaldo and the whole South Bay SoCal 86 crew uh, for hooking me up with uh, the shark fin antenna it's really sweet I have hugely appreciative of that so I'm gonna install it on the car today I'll be doing a separate video showing you how I installed it and uh, you know what I think about it and the way it looks and stuff it's really cool they come pre-painted and uh, yeah I'll talk more about it though in that separate video but uh, yeah so that's gonna be getting put onto the BRZ I'm still kind of holding off on the front lip uh, I'm still I like it I, but one thing is it's gonna be a pain to drop the whole front bumper to install it and I'm still uncomfortable with the idea of drilling all those holes in the front bumper I mean you're not gonna see the holes but you know I just feel like that might hurt the resale value a little bit or you know something I don't know especially with this news that I'll uh, be discussing later about an updated 86 slash BRZ hopefully on the horizon I'm not entirely sure I want to make any more permanent modifications to this car because uh, I might be upgrading to a newer one here in the not too distant future we'll see but uh so yeah, not totally sure what I'm doing with the front lip yet. Um, I might actually sell it, so it's posted up on the FT86 Club forums if anyone's interested in buying it off of me that's local. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know, I might still keep it. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. So yeah, that's it for all the updates this week, guys. I'll send back to me at the news desk for this week's news. Right, so for this week's news, the first thing is very exciting, and that is that the chief engineer that uh, did the whole 86 BRZ FRS project, the guy that spearheaded and basically made this possible, this whole car, he had a birthday recently, and a lot of his fans wish him happy birthday on Facebook, and he thanked them, and then he dropped some pretty sweet news in his thank you, and he said that uh, the 86 is a car that's going to have to evolve, and that he's very excited to show us what the first evolution of that car will be, and uh, he said it's going to be soon. So, uh, and I've done some digging around here after I've read this report, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about you know, little hints here and there about what this new 86 is going to be like and uh, things like that. And, uh, you know, it's not really totally sure. You know, I've reported uh, things in the past about how the Subaru version might just get the TS treatment with, you know, the STI bits all over it, but it won't actually have any performance upgrades. This is suggesting it might have performance upgrades or that might come next year, but there will be some kind of evolution, I think, for the 2015 model year. Uh, whether or not it's just cosmetic or whether it's an actual performance update or whatever, no one really knows just yet. But the exciting thing is this car could be released as soon as this fall. So um, I know a lot of you might have already been on the edge about whether to wait and buy a 2014 or buy a 2015 or what to do. Uh, but some other interesting news has said that he, the, this engineer, is interested in making these evolutions um, easy enough that you can actually do it to your own existing car. So you don't actually have to go out and buy the new car. That This is stuff that 
you could do to modify the car on your own um, and you know things like that that's something he says he'd like to do so I don't know you know how that would factor in as far as power upgrades or if there's gonna be larger engines or different things going on still lots and lots of stuff we don't know yet but at the very least he's confirmed there is going to be an evolution of the 86 um, and he's on the Toyota side so as far as Subaru's end with the BRZ that they might go off and do their own thing. I've heard reports that STI is making an STI version totally on their own, totally independent of Toyota, and that they're kind of splitting off and they're kind of developing the car differently on both sides. I don't know if that's true. I don't, like I said, this is all just a bunch of conjecture right now. But um, there is going to be an evolution of this car, which is exciting because, you know, there's been reports that the sales haven't been as good as, you know, they expected. That's kind of been a little bit of a BS story. Uh, they actually, the car is still selling well enough that it's, you know, reaching the expectations that Subaru and Toyota had for the car. Um, but, you know, so this is definitely saying they're, they're investing in the project still. You know, they're still going to develop this car, which is very good news. So that's great to hear. Right, so the next bit of news is uh, something from Subaru, and then this is over a week old, so I don't know how I missed this, but this is like, Subaru just released like two viral videos, basically, in the past like week and a half, and uh, they're like super popular, and I had no idea, I don't know how I missed it, um, but there's this uh, WRX STI versus Stick Bomb, which is this uh, pretty sweet video, it has like 2.3 million views already of a little RC version of the uh, WRX STI and race trim, and it's like just driving on this little course it's built with this whole Stick Bomb idea, it's very, very cool. I think it's, it looks awesome and I'll include the link below so you can watch that video. And uh, the other thing is uh, they're marketing the 2015 STI in a kind of rebellious way in America here and this is pretty cool. So there's this new channel on YouTube called WRXXX Productions and uh, it's basically uh, this cheesy kind of 70s vibe to this commercial but it, it's like a short film that they're doing and uh, it's uh, pretty sweet. It has Buck Bucky Lasik in it and uh, a bunch of other <laughs> interesting uh, characters in this movie. It's basically, uh, you know, this rebel guy stealing the sheriff's daughter and this, you know, there's lots of drifting around dirt and uh, all kinds of funny stuff and it's hilarious and uh, they have a, they had a few teasers and then there's an official trailer I don't know how long this movie's gonna be but the official trailer is two minutes and 35 seconds long and it's pretty hilarious a pretty awesome and uh, you know I was complaining in the past few weeks here about how Subaru is conservative with the new legacy and uh, you know being conservative with not making the WRX more like the concept but uh, their marketing for the STI is certainly not conservative it's uh, pushing the limits a little bit and I think it's gonna pay off big time for Subaru so this is a very smart marketing decision. Really glad that they're taking a risk with these uh, interesting commercials. So that's a very, very cool. Okay, so on to some new car news. Uh, first is that uh, the 2014 Honda Civic Si that we saw at SEMA has officially uh, been priced and the specs have been released. And it's going to be $22,790 um, for the coupe, I'm assuming. And uh, it has more power, but wait for it. It's four more horsepower. <sighs> Mind blown, right? I don't know. I still think that they need to have, you know, some... Uh, updates to this car to make it a real serious contender and especially it's even more painful to know that that's all we get in America considering the uh, awesome Civic Type R that you know was released at Geneva last week and how sick that thing is with 276 horsepower uh, at least that's like the conservative rating I mean this is this thing is a monster that you know was debuted at Geneva and that's transitioning into my next story, which is that there's actually a petition to bring the Type R to the U.S. Um, because there's been conflicting reports about whether or not it's actually coming to the U.S. Most people, most enthusiasts that follow the Type R are still pretty sure it's not coming to the U.S. because this Civic is based on the Euro Civic. The Type R is based on the Euro architecture in the U.S. We have a totally different Civic structure, and so it's a completely different car. And uh, so bring the Type R to the US, bring this Type R, I don't know if it would meet our crash safety standards and all that kind of stuff, but um, there's a huge petition here that has, uh, they need 7,500 uh, votes, and right now they have 6,000 so far, 6,000 people signing this petition, they want the Type R brought to the US, and uh, that's really cool that you know everyone's stepping up and contributing, and hopefully they can bring this car to the States, because that now that would be a serious, awesome Honda Civic. Uh, this new SI, eh, just kind of meh to me. Another thing uh, is uh, some spy shots that have come out over the past week, and that the first one is uh, there's a Porsche 911 Cabriolet that's spied. It uh, has more aggressive bodywork, slightly has some odd tailpipes in the back. They're thinking it could be the GTS model, but no one's really sure what's going on because they thought they were testing four-cylinder models in the past, and it's just it's all a bunch of mystery. So uh, not sure what's going on with that, but it looks sweet, whatever it is. 
Next is uh, the new Mercedes C63 AMG has been spied over the past week in uh, sedan and wagon form and looks spectacular in both. Really happy they're continuing on with the wagon thing for the next performance version of the C-Class. And uh, it looks, I mean, it's camouflage. You can't really see a ton, but you can see some wheels they're considering and, uh, you know, the big front air dam and things like that. Typical of what you would expect from an AMG version of the C. And uh, it looks really good, though, so I can't wait to see the production version of that. Another thing that was spied was the Acura TLX was caught totally undisguised out in production uh, bodywork, and it looks really good. It looks almost identical to the concept, so uh, good job Acura for staying true to the concept. It has those sweet crystal eye uh, headlights that they've been doing with the LEDs, and it looks like a nice car, so uh, yeah, I'm glad to see they stuck with the concept. Um, and some slightly sad news is that uh, Jaguar has announced that they're discontinuing the XK this summer. Uh, they're going to stop production of it. I mean, that's a car that's been around for a while now. That's a pretty old design. I mean, it's still spectacular in the XK RS version and stuff that's just been recently tested. Um, and the XK, though, it's just, you know, it's a little bit more comfortable. It's a little larger than the F-Type, but still, I mean, right now, the hot one is obviously the F-Type. It's much better looking, and uh, I think the XK just doesn't really have much of a place, and so that's why Jaguar is discontinuing it. So it's sad. Uh, it's always sad to see a car go, but, uh, you know, I think that it's probably time for the XK. Speaking of uh, cars ceasing production, though, another interesting one here. McLaren, uh, you know, they obviously just came out with the new 650S here at Geneva, which is a high-performance, uh, better-looking version of the 12C. And um, they, But McLaren has sworn, I mean, because this car is going to be more expensive and faster than the 12C. And McLaren was saying, no, we still are going to have the 12C. You can still order a 12C. But uh, apparently there's reports now that they're stopping production of the 12C. I, I mean, they said they'll still build you one if you order one. Um, but they're basically stopping production of it so that they can build as many 650Ss as possible. Um, so, I mean, I'm guessing that if you really, really wanted a 12C, you could probably do that uh, still. But, um, you yeah, there's plenty of 12Cs, I think, out there already that... I think McLaren figures they can stop production, at least temporarily, to build more 650Ss, which sounds good to me, though, because the 650S is awesome, and I can't wait to see some of those out on the streets. Uh, another interesting bit of news here is Rolls-Royce says they're planning a plug-in hybrid, and uh, they tried a plug-in hybrid in the past called the 102EX, and it didn't have very good range, and um, people just were not into it, and Rolls-Royce customers actually said, we will not buy this car, we don't want it. So Rolls-Royce killed the project back then, but now they're going to try again with uh, another plug-in hybrid. I'm not sure why, uh, it's not like, I mean, plug-in hybrids, I realize that's a hip, cool thing now to, you know, have a hybrid car in some parts of the world, um, but, you know, I feel like Rolls-Royce is still, it's, it's excess. You're not going to look frugal in a Rolls-Royce hybrid, you're not saving any money, it's still a super heavy car, it's not going to be good on gas no matter what you do to it, um, so I just still think this idea is really dumb, um, but we'll see, I mean, maybe Rolls-Royce customers are now open to the idea, but uh, I doubt that car is ever going to make production still. Other interesting news is Audi uh, has some plans for the new version of the R8. Now, you know, the R8 was updated here with the Plus version, but they're going to have an all-new car soon. It's going to be based on the Lamborghini Huracan, which uh, should be interesting. But they're saying that Audi's going to kind of go separate ways. I mean, the R8 has kind of been viewed as a cheaper version of a Gallardo. Um, but Audi's saying that for the new R8, they're going to make, even though it's going to be based on the Huracan, it's going to be longer, it's going to be wider, it's going to be so... I think it's probably going to be a heavier car, slightly more luxurious than the Lamborghini. Um, and they're also saying they're going to play around with a, a couple different motor options. They're going to have the V8 that they have now. They're going to have the V10 that they have now. But they also want to do some kind of turbocharged four or five cylinder, maybe a six cylinder engine. Um, but they're going to do some kind of turbo motor for this car probably uh, because they want to sell it in other markets where apparently the V8 or V10 isn't allowed. And um, it's going to be interesting though to see you know how they differentiate it from the Uricon. Uh, should be good to see. No word as to when that car is going to come out, but uh, hopefully it'll be soon. And another interesting thing is Toyota just seems to be making partnerships left and right with everyone. First it was Subaru, then they did the partnership with BMW that we're waiting to see what happens with that whole thing. And now there's a report saying that Toyota is working with Mazda. Toyota um, reached an agreement to use the new Skyactiv engines that Mazda has, which are really, really good on gas, um, really cool technology. And so Toyota wants to use that in their new subcompact, which is like, you know, their new Yaris or whatever it is they're going to be calling it. Um, and uh, so that's pretty interesting. I mean, Toyota knows how to make a really fuel-efficient four-cylinder themselves, so I'm not sure why they're looking to Mazda for the Skyactiv technology. But uh, that's pretty cool, so um, expect that awesome little engine in the new subcompact that they have. 
And the last little bit of news is uh, Maserati has said that the Alfieri, which uh, we saw at Geneva, which is basically the new Gran Turismo, that that could come to production within 28 months. They say that they already have the basic architecture and structure for the car. They already have the engines all established. So they could basically just, I mean, they could make this car very very soon so we can see that car here in the next you know two years or so which is really exciting because that looks spectacular and the sooner that's on the road the better uh... they said that the first thing they're going to be working on though is their suv called the levante um, and so once that comes out then they'll do the sports car but uh... yeah good things in maserati so yeah that's it for all the news this week guys so i'll send it back to me in the car All right, so. I have the windows rolled down here, so I'll leave you guys with a nice little acceleration like I always do. <laughs> Downright violent today with the windows all the way down in these hills, and oh, I love it. And these snow tires, whenever it's warm, these snow tires do not grip very well, so it's a little squirrelier than it normally is anyway. So, uh, Fun times for sure. There's that huge smile again. It's been almost two years. This car still puts a smile on my face every time I do that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next week. Take care.